Hi everyone, Brybone here, back with another one. This is the continuation of our previous video in the series, Adversaries Are Doing Stranger Things. This is part two. So in the end of the last video, we had got our beacon installed or our C2 method, which is a Terra. And we're gonna use that now to escalate privileges and find some more information, do some discovery. So if we go back to our slide of what we're looking at, we're going to escalate privileges. We're going to use some forensic tools here, and then we're going to do discovery. Uh, you could use any of these utilities to do discovery, but I'm simply just going to do it from the Atera console. So let's start. We have our Atera host. It is connected here. Host to win 10. We can see our typical victim, Clint. And what we want to do is we want to start interacting with this host now and get some more information. One of the interesting things about Atera is you can go to manage here and you can get a command prompt or a PowerShell prompt. Pretty cool. Now, if the user is not in front of the system, you can also connect with Splashtop because it installs Splashtop. So that's another artifact to look for. If, if your users are not using Splashtop and then suddenly you see connections to Splashtop, it could be Splashtop from the Atera agent, right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop open PowerShell. And as you can see, it's going to connect. And then notice it gives me a shell that's not your normal shell. I'm not Clint Barton. If I take a look, I am system. So I'm not Clint. I'm running a system. So I have a high integrity shell. I can basically do anything I want with this host now. And I may be able to do things that EDR can't stop me. Uh, speaking of EDR, if we jump over here to win host two, I have not changed anything. We have real-time protection, cloud delivery protection, automatic sample submission, and tamper protection all enabled. Defender's not going to care. So let's keep going here. We'll go back to our Atera agent. And I'm just going to clear the screen and we're gonna start our process. The first thing we want to do is we want to download WinPmem. WinPmem is a forensic utility for creating an image of RAM. So we'll go ahead and we'll download that. And this is just quite simply a invoke request. And then we're gonna download WinPmem Mini X64 RC2. And then we're gonna put that into CTemp WinPmem here. So we'll create that and it's already there. So it's probably going to error. And just give it a second here. If we ls for it, we should see in here. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory, that's why. Give me just one second here, let it finish out. Of course it has to be at the root of C, so it's going to show every possible file there. I'm just going to go ahead and close my session here and we'll start another one. Go to PowerShell here. And then we're going to, this time we'll go into the right directory, which I just told it to go into. Uh, we'll go into a world writable. We'll go into C colon backslash windows and then temp. World writable, right? Nothing's going to stop me. I'm trying to emulate the adversary here. Even though I have a system shell, I'm trying to emulate what an adversary would do. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna have that download and send to c temp when pmem.exe. And we're gonna go see Windows temp here. And when pmem.exe. And there we go, it is doing it and it looks like it did our invoke. So if I do dir now, I should have when pmem. Down here at the very bottom, I have when pmem.exe. So quite simply, I want to have when, when pmem create a memory image. So if I go down slash when pmem, just to make sure that this executable will run, it should give me, hey, this is a memory imager for Windows, right? So we just want it to write a file like fizzmem raw. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll have it do, we'll do dot slash when pmem exe, fizzmem.raw. 
And the idea here is that we're creating a full image of memory. We'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna pause the video because this is going to take forever to do. Uh, files being used by another process. Give me just one second here. We'll do FISMEM2 because I already did one, so we'll do FISMEM2. And that's gonna take a little bit. So let me go ahead and pause the video here because this is gonna take a moment to create this huge file. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. And as you can see, we see driver unloaded and a bunch of stuff copied to the screen. So now we should have a file called FISMEM2 and it should be huge. So if I do DIR, and we look through here, we're gonna see two huge files. One I did earlier, which is FISMEM, and then FISMEM RAW2, right here, FISMEM2.RAW. So FISMEM2.RAW is the file that we're gonna to try to exfiltrate. So one of the easiest ways to exfiltrate files is to blend in or send to cloud storage. In this case, uh, I could use OneDrive if I so chose, but I'm simply just gonna use AWS. I'm gonna to copy to S3, right? If your org is not watching files going to S3, this is exactly what can happen to you. So I'm copying a file full of credentials out to S3. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear. And then I'm going to do some additional installations on this host. I'm gonna install some modules for PowerShell, in particular, those required for AWS. So I'll do install module name AWS tools installer forced, and then I'm gonna do AWS tools S3 force. And then I apologize, but I'm going to pause again so I can create my variables. Those variables have the keys for my bucket in there, and I, I do use this bucket quite frequently, so I don't wanna expose those. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here, and then I will come back when we are ready to start copying to S3. All right, we're back. So now I'm going to exfil this file to S3. So I have my variables in. I'm going to go ahead and just run this simple write S3 object command, and this will send it out to an S3 bucket. So if we paste this in, we can see write S3 object. We'll give it the bucket name. I've got a variable for the bucket name. I've got a variable for the region, variable for the key, variable for the secret key. This is just so I don't expose those keys from my bucket so I don't get a bunch of charges because <laughs> I know you guys would write to that bucket. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this and we can see it's just gonna start. Now this is a huge file. It's gonna take forever to upload. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again here. Once again, apologies for all the pauses in this video, but there's a lot of steps to this uh, since we're doing a complete intrusion but I'll pause right here and I will come back once the S3 bucket has the file in it. All right, we're back. So I realized after <laughs> I started the copy that I copied the original file, not FISMM2. They are the same memory image from the same host. I didn't feel like waiting the hour and a half to copy up FISMM2. So we're just gonna use FISMM raw for everything going forward. So I have my FISMIM raw file here in my S3 bucket. Now I've staged this in a couple of places. I have it on my RDP box here for Kali, and then I have it on my Hunter box. Now I'm gonna pause one more time just to verify that those files are correct, and then we'll go from there. All right, we're back. So I have verified that I have the FISMIM raw file on the correct locations that it is the exact right file. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna start with Kali. So over here on Kali, and I ran it just to make sure that it worked, I did sudo python3 volatility.py, and then I put this in my xfil directly, directory, and I ran hash dump. If you saw the webcast or you've seen my previous video on this, this gets you the local hashes, right? So this is the locals. But what if I want more than the locals? What if I want everything I would get from a standard LSAS dump? I can use a utility called memprocfs. Now I'm not gonna tell you how to edit the memprocfs code to make this work, but you can take memprocfs and you can get everything from a standard 
LSAS dump. Now I'm going to show you how to do that or how it's done. So over here I have my FizzMem raw file. I've downloaded it from Kali. I have it on my desktop here. So I have a very special version of MemprocFS in my files and I'm going to simply mount this file. So I'm going to use my memprocfs-f and I'm going to mount the one that is on my desktop. So we'll go ahead and we'll mount that and notice it creates a mount point of M. Now you do have to have the Doken file system on here to make that work. So you may want to have a Windows host handy if you're doing something like this. So I'm going to go over here to M memprocfs and then I'll go into name. And notice these are the names of the processes. So if I wanted all the memory from Chrome, I could get it. If I want all the memory from Elastic, I can get it. But what am I interested in? LSAS. So if I go into LSAS and I go into mini dump, here is a mini dump dot dump file. This is the same mini dump that you would get from dumping LSAS. We just kind of did it a very long drawn out way to get around EDR. So we'll choose this file. We'll go to our M directory here. We're going to go to name. We're going to go into LSAS. Then we'll go into mini dump and we'll get our mini dump dot dump and we'll go into open and we're just going to go upload here and this should upload it to Kali, much smaller file to deal with. So now if we come over here and we're in our Xfil directory, we'll just do, let's see, clear my screen here. And we have our FizzMem raw and we have our mini dump dot dump. And we're quite simply going to do PyPyCats LSA mini dump and mini dump dot dump. So we'll do mini dump and mini dump dot dump. And notice we got a lot more stuff here, right? Here's our host hash. Here is our accounts. Now notice we've got an account here, tenable service account. We didn't have that before because it wasn't a local account. And we've got the NT hash of this. This is most likely a vulnerability scanner. If you happen upon a vulnerability scanner, odds are those credentials are used everywhere and they're most likely the same. So you could probably pass the hash for anything that this is scanning, right? So this is a very valuable account that we were able to get with this technique that we couldn't get other ways. So once again, bad guys are doing stranger things. I had to do all this gyration. I didn't do anything super technical to get an LSS dump, but I got an LSS dump with Defender on. All right, so our next phase, we're gonna look at discovery a little bit. And as I mentioned with a Terra, you can simply just do network discovery. So if I come over here and I do network discovery, I've already done a discovery scan here and it's found everything on my subnet and said it's online. I didn't do anything magical here. My target will be Win 2016 FS in the third one of the series because we're gonna do some impact stuff. But notice, all I did was tell it, hey, find this, right? And it found all of these hosts in my subnet. I didn't have to download Advanced IP Scanner. I didn't have to download Soft Perfect Network Scan. I could have done any of that to get this information and get by Defender. But in this case, Atera just did it for me. So I really don't have to do very much. All right, so we have done our escalation of privileges and our discovery, right? We've done those two things. That's it for this particular video, but I wanna show you the detection. So to detect the things that I did here, we'll jump over here to our uh, SIM. Do I have it open? Give me just one second here. All right, our SIM is open now. And I'm going to go to Discover. And the first thing we want to find is we want to find the Win PMIM usage. You guys should have rules in place to find these forensic utilities. So if we do event.code, and we'll do either 4688 or run one. I'm going to do 4688. 
because this is the, probably the most common in most environments unless you've dis installed SysMom. And we're going to look for winpmem.exe. And I'm not seeing that. So let's try event code one. Actually, we were running from PowerShell. So event code one, we'll find it. Well, let's do 4104. I think I'm having a timing problem. Yeah, something strange with my sim here. Uh, but if we look here at 4104 and we go to our utilities, we can see this is the download of that. Let's go back to 4688 now because I have a feeling that that was a timing issue. Yeah, and now we can see process execution for WinPMIM. And here we have PowerShell running WinPMIM, running WinPMIM from C Windows 10. So if somebody's running WinPMIM on your systems, you need to be aware when that's happening. So if we want to find our XFIL2 S3, we can do 4104. And then we're going to look for write S3 object because that is the main method that uh, the tools use when you're using their default tools. So write S3 object. We can see here, here's a script block. And here is our creating script block. Here's our bucket name. We were writing FISMIM raw out to the bucket. So that's not good. Now, all of the rest of this, we did off box. So this is the only detection you would be able to do. So once I stole that memory file, I got everything else from a different method. Now, if you were looking for a Terra, you would be able to see the beaconing back and forth and the connection to a Terra. But that's all the detection. All right. That's it for our second in the series. Thanks again. Hack the planet to defend better.